Hi folks, last week I showed you how I made this HHO generator which burns oxygen and hydrogen at a very high temperature so, so hot that I can melt almost every type of material So today I'm going to use it using also tin foil and other little components to make synthetic ruby I think it's very interesting, also, it's also quite dangerous so safety is number one priority for today's video So follow me for a couple minutes, I'll show you what's in my mind Let's start taking a glass container. We also need some acid and this is a 30% chloridic acid. We need 100 grams of tin foil and this is very common because it's used in kitchen. It's a good idea also to strip it in little pieces so we can accelerate later on all the process. So put pieces here on the table and drop a couple fingers of acid inside the glass container. Now I can drop the pieces of tin foil inside the acid be careful, don't drop 100 grams all in once, but instead put some pieces at a time. So here are 20 pieces, I push them with a plastic straw and you can already see that we have a reaction. The reaction is very strong, it will produce a lot of heat and a lot of smoke, so be careful, be careful that the glass container can explode and please don't breathe these gases. I'm wearing a safety mask and this is the bubble and the foam. So I let sit the container for about 24 hours and after 24 hours this is the result. We have got a very beautiful color, it's like a green radioactive substance and now we have to eliminate the acidity. So I can drop this, this sodium carbonate and you can see that we are forming a lot of bubbles. This, I repeat this a lot of times until all the bubbles will stop. We are, and I'm eliminating the acidity so we, all the aluminium that was melted inside the liquid will start to sink on the bottom and now I have to eliminate instead the sodium bicarbonate so I can add some uh, demineralized water and so we are melting again the sodium carbonate inside the, the water so you can see that on the bottom we have aluminium oxide and on the top we have acid that is no more acid we have water and we have bicarbonate so I can suck away using a big syringe the fluid that is on top and put it away and we only end to have a very very jelly, jelly white powder here on the bottom. I can put it on a heat source, for example my kitchen oven and let all the water that is inside evaporate and this is the result. We got a very nice and fine powder, this is aluminium oxide, it's a very strong and very strong white. I bought in a local shop this powder that is uh, chromium oxide. It's a very beautiful green, I really love it. And now with a little spoon, uh, because it's very dangerous, don't touch it and also don't breathe it. This is chromium oxide, it's quite nasty and I can pour the parts together. These are the ratio, when how you have to mix them together and mix them very very slowly because I don't want to make a very big mess in the air. So after four minutes this is the result, are very well mixed and as you can see the powders are very very fine. I take this, that is a sex soy, because inside there is a very interesting component. Inside there is a little motor and this little motor is the same one that is inside your smartphone when it starts to vibrate. Because as you can see in the front there is a little weight, it is not centered, so once, when it starts to spin it will also produce vibration because it is not centered. So I dismount some more, because I need a couple of these motors, I connect ele electric wires to them, because my idea is to glue them to a side Range. Yes, you understand well, I'm talking about a very big syringe with a very big need needle in front because I want to use it like a glass sour so they can drop the powder in a very precise way. So I glue the motor here on the nozzle because the powder is so thin that probably will get stuck inside the syringe. Instead, if I can make it shake or move, there are more chances that it can pass through the needle and go out. So I can fill the syringe with the powder, I suggest you don't fill it on uh, the top but just at halfway so that we don't get this nasty powder in the air, flying in the air. So I take also this white piece, this is a, a piece from a oven so we'll stand heat quite well. You can see that once the motor starts to spin, also the front part of the needle being very very strong so I'm pretty confident that this will work but instead after four minutes this is the only amount of powder I was able to get out 
and also get stuck inside the needle. So there's no way to get it unstuck. Uh, so I decide to replace the original needle of the syringe with this one that usually is used to inflate balls. So I uh, attach it also here and you can see that it's shaking very well. It's not also producing a lot of powder. It's not what I want. So I replace it for the last time with a bigger one. This is a brass tube. It's 4 mm wide and this time I'm pretty sure it's impossible that gets stuck again. I glue also the motor here in the position and let's test it for the last time. You can see that now finally the powder is coming out. My idea is to melt this powder with this little flame. This is hydrogen and oxygen flame and was the video of last week. So if you lost it, I put your link here on the top side. So check it out. And unfortunately the heat was so strong that the white part exploded, but you can see that we were producing crystals from ruby. These pink parts are ruby crystals. So I'm pretty confident I can do it. I need just to replace the base and this time I will take this. This is a graphite base and this can stand extreme heat without problems. You can see now with this very dark black ground that we have a very big amount of powder coming out. Yes, because the idea is that we start to melt a little bit of this powder, but then other powder will fall on top and get stuck, uh, stick to it, and will melt again. So we get, we have, we are producing a crystal like this. We have powder that is falling on top of the crystals and keeping the flame in, in this exact spot for almost a minute will produce a, a very small crystal. This is the first ever ruby I'm making and this one instead is the biggest one ever I made today. This is almost one centimeter big, nine millimeters almost. And it's very interesting watching the color changing from a very nice gray or black to a pink and then purple and I guarantee you that the inside is absolutely red. It's just the outside part that is a little bit dirty or oxidate, but inside we have a very nice ruby. And these rubies are extremely hard. Are the hardest rock just before diamond. I made a lot of them, almost 20. And if you are thinking that are quite small, I want to show you something. Let me grab one, for example, this one, this measure half centimeter. I want to show you an original ruby that I took away from my house. This is a very nice ruby and you can see that the one I made today is not so small anymore. You have to imagine that the homemade one have to be cut and shaped like a small ruby. I, take, I can then take a UV light and test the ruby I made. If it's, if it's an original ruby, it will light up like this one and you can see also that mine or <laughs> ruby lights up from the middle unfortunately the surface is not so smooth or clean so you can just see the light from the inside so i'm quite happy and here are all the rubies i have more i put them apart but here are the ones are a little bit small the biggest one was almost one centimeter i tried to take it with my tongs but i have big fingers i'm not used to this kind of job it is such a precise job so when i crush it it just skip away i, I don't know I, I lost it here on the table i think it went here between the boards so it's somewhere here it was a very sad experience but i'm very excited because in a couple minutes i made a lot of little rubies it's very difficult because the gas blows away the powder so this takes some practice i think i need to put something that keep the flame over there so working in a flat surface is not a good idea maybe it was a great idea to have a surface that is graphite in uh, like a spoon shape so you can work it there and doesn't blow all the powder away so uh, the biggest one i i think i will use it to cut glass because ruby is the hardest rock, hardest rock before diamond. So with ruby you can scratch glass or just cut it. And it's also very used in CNC or 3D printing because a ruby doesn't get worn away during time. It's so hard that always stay at that dimension. So you can use it like a probe to touch and put all the axes at zero. So I want to use it on my CNC to do this later on because a ruby also can conduct electricity. So that's the reason why. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a thumbs up if you do it. I, I recommend to use safety mask and goggles because uh, aluminum powder when burns produce a very 
high temperature and also very uh, intense white light so safety, safety glass and also a mask because the powder of uh, chrome is quite nasty so be careful I leave you as always with my two previous videos so check them out if you lost also the generator HHO generator was a very fun project so you find the link here so check them out see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial ciao ciao